Hey everybody, Tom Barnes, Stories from the 78 here at the Goose Island Tap Room right here on Fulton. A really interesting time to be here. First time since 2016, they're not brewing beer. No, in fact, they're taking down equipment, they're upgrading it to continue their innovation. I'm gonna to talk to Mike, who's been doing that whole thing for 12 years here at Goose. And we're gonna talk about how they have employees give them input to help brew beer. I mean, the forklift operator to the brewmaster himself all responsible all have a part in brewing beer here at the goose island beer company that is the story from the 78 now all right it is the holiday season here at goose island we're at the uh, tap room on fulton i'm here with my friend mike how you doing mike very good how are you i'm doing well happy holidays to you sir happy holidays tom yeah so uh before we get started your big fancy title let's get that out of the way just so people know that i'm talking to somebody official sure sure uh <laughs> So I'm here at Goose Island. I worked for Goose Island for the last 12 years. My, my title is Senior Manager of Innovation. So innovation meaning new beer development, to put it simply. Right, and that is something that's uh, I would say a lot of people might not know about or realize here at Goose Island. There's a little party going on behind you. This is all a part of the real uh, vibe we got going on here. But we walk through part of the brewery at a very unique time yeah. for that innovation because yeah, yeah. just like anything else, innovation requires some kind of maintenance because you got to keep going got to keep pushing forward and that's what you guys sure. are in the process of doing right now right the whole brewery actually so we're a, we're a 24 7 brewery typically but right. as you mentioned we just started a what'll end up being a four or five week shutdown so we're ceasing at, this is in the big brewery right. uh, we walked through the pilot brewery the pilot brewery is actually continuing to brew that's the two barrel brewery the 50 barrel brewery in the cellar uh that is being shut down so that we can put new equipment in and it's just part it's just part of the, what we call the fabric is like keeping the the bones of the brewery top notch absolutely and that's what people have come to expect from goose island but it's the first time since 2016 yes. since the uh, world series here that we that we've shut down for such a significant amount of time you don't you know you you don't take that lightly no brewery does to right. you're 24 7 to be shutting down for a month or more but again you got to do it you got to do it every now and again uh, it, it's, like, it's like taking your car into the shop and getting that required maintenance, you know. Uh, this is a pretty heavy tune-up. Right. And it requires some planning, I bet. Yeah, lots of planning. We've all, on the manager level, we've been talking about this pretty much weekly for the last six months or more. Uh, and during up. this, uh, throughout the year and throughout the years that are coming, I think it's very important for people to realize that you guys, are not, you never stop trying to come up with something new. And it could be from... Uh, the forklift operator to the head brewer, anybody in between, they got an idea. There's a way for them to present their idea, which I think is amazing for a brewery at this level. Yeah. I mean, it's I mean, people can buy this beer across the nation, right? Sure. And even overseas. Yeah. So for somebody to have that impact right here in Chicago is a really great responsibility and really cool. And that's you know that's why we're here in the tap room too. I'd say uh, anywhere from a quarter to sometimes maybe even half of the beers here on tap, we've got 16 taps, would be from the Pilot Brewery. So uh, the Pilot Brewery being the small scale brewery, like I said, that we're producing 80 brews a year down there. So on average, you know, one and a half brews a week or one to two brews a week. Uh, and we're always doing something new. Sometimes it's a, it's a beer that's, okay, this is gonna be a high priority. And so we're gonna keep brewing it, keep brewing sure. it five, six, seven trials, maybe more, until we get it dialed in for then going up to what I call production brewery, which is the big brewery. And that's what we saw from the tap deck, right? Correct. The tap deck was overlooking the 50 barrel brew house. Again, when we say something's going into production, it means like it's been rubber stamped, like this is this is a Goose Island official brand now. Uh, all of these, or I'd say all these that came off the pilot brewery uh, are taste panel approved. So everything that's down here is, goes through our official taste panel where we're putting, presenting the beer. People, uh, it's usually in an app form on a phone called Draft Lab, and we're saying like, what's the appearance of the beer? What's the aroma? What's the taste? What's the these are people. Feel? These yes. are employees here at Goose. Yeah, this is our, this is our yeah. trained tasting yeah. staff. Um, we're evaluating the beer in that we have to get a taste panel approval, which is kind of, um, we don't always have unanimous uh, feelings. Sometimes beers can be a little bit more polarizing if they've got some unique characters yeah. in them. Um, but we're saying, this is what we wanted to make. This is the style of the beer. This is the description of the beer. This is what we want. Did we achieve that? Did we call, we say, did we hit our target? Right. Uh, but as you mentioned, it's a, it's a, for beer creation around here, we have many different lanes. One of those lanes is, as you mentioned, uh, Mike Polt uh, is 
been a forklift operator here for 25 years. And so five years ago, he came to us and said, I'm getting ready to celebrate my 20th anniversary. I'd like to brew a Kolsch. She said, that's a great idea. We do celebratory <laughs> beers all the time. Weddings, right. uh, Which anniversaries. Which I think is super yeah. cool that you guys, I mean, people here can have their own brew. It's an employee only thing, but yeah. it's still a, a great perk that you yeah, can yeah. sell. That's we, amazing. We like to be very democratic about the, the process of new beer creation. Now, you know, again, it's just one of the, it's a, what I call parallel paths. So we've got the beers that our innovation team creates and kind of that's oftentimes uh, are usually our big bets. Mm -hmm. The beers are going to be larger volume brands for Goose Island eventually. These are just, you know, a small two barrel batch, but it's impactful. Somebody could have it, you know, the, the wedding beer they could brew in advance of their wedding and have it on tap for their wedding uh, or just have a beer on tap here like Mike's. Mike's Kolsch is the fifth the fifth anniversary of us making a Kolsch with Mike. We change it up every single year. And this is this is exactly what Mike wanted. You know, and Mike Kolsch, got it, as yeah, he Mike should. 20, 20 year employee, now 25, right? Yeah. So, you know, and it's a great Kolsch. A Kolsch in and of itself isn't groundbreaking, but uh, an innovation is purely an, a new beer through the pipelines here. Uh, not every beer is quote unquote innovative, uh, innovative in the true uh, definition of the word being like this has never been done before. You right. know, like no, when yeah. Bourbon County went into the barrel for the first time, it was like this was an innovation; it had never been done before. Right. So, um, but you run the gamut of something like that all the way to a Kolsch. Correct. It's we don't we try not to be the ones that are kind of judging the merits of the idea. We want to take that idea, the creative kernel of that, and help somebody achieve it technically. So we try to hold their hand technically through the the process to get what they want made and if if there's something that sounds a little bit weird about it we'll just say okay here's what we think we're going to get here is that what you're looking for and they they can either go yeah actually i didn't think about it that way or yeah that's exactly what i was looking for right yeah you most know? people know what they want in the end they just yeah. don't know how to get there and yeah. you guys the the staff here that's that's why you're here yes. to help them get there and that's what how mike got his close you yourself you've been here for 12 years and I'm sure that you put something forth back then that people can drink today, right? Yeah, it's, um, I've, I've been fortunate enough to have a lot of, make a lot of beers here. Um, I try to get, uh, I, don't, I don't put forth my ideas that often anymore because I've been so fortunate, but uh, at least once a year I try to put my mark on a, on a new recipe. And we tried one earlier that you kind of put your mark yeah, on, right? Yeah, the Czech Dark Lager. That's in the tank now, that'll be ready in a couple weeks, but um, Really, the, the pure joy of the job now is helping like project manage these ideas collectively. I, I do a lot of work on Bourbon County Stout, so that's its own kind of juggernaut. You sure know, is. As far Prop as Day is a giant not, yeah. day, which is uh, a lot of fun for sure. So that obviously needs a lot of my attention, but um, but just the whole like kind of again project management side of like new beer creation. I love seeing people's faces when they get to try their beer here in the tap room for the first time. Um, it's, it really is that joy because we talked about it earlier. It's like if you people work here at a brewery, more than likely because they love beer. Uh, I couldn't tell you a hundred percent of the people, but I'd say the vast majority of people that Be work if they did. at a brewery, yeah, <laughs> isn't just the most convenient job they can right, get. Right, you said it's, this... they sought out working here at Goose Island at this brewery. Right, it's not all glory. It's ten hour days, sometime overnights, and it's, it's sometimes work, cold, yeah. sometimes it's wet, yeah, sometimes it's hot, right? Yeah. In the, in the summertime, this place gets yeah, really Chicago, hot. Yeah, Chicago gets warm. Yeah. Uh, and you guys just recently shut down the OG spot there in Goose Island, gearing up for 2024 over at Salt Shed, Salt which Shed. is just going to be amazing because yeah. that music venue is like nowhere else in the country. Yeah, yeah. I, I really think it, it's, of course, bittersweet. Of course, um, yeah. You know, I was at Clybourne Thursday night. Um, really for the last time. That was like we're, the last hurrah. Almost, well, right? yeah, it was the last public hurrah. We're going to have a, uh, a company party there tomorrow night to really kind of uh, send it off, and send it off yeah. drain the tanks, right? And um, so it's bittersweet to see that place close after 35 years. But the, of course, the sweet part is uh, Salt Shed. Like you said, it, I think it's a once, call it a once in a generation opportunity. Absolutely. To get to a, a hub of such uh, amazing uh, entertainment. You know, yeah. the location, we're, we're going to be literally right on the river. So it's a small building uh, adjacent to the salt shed, uh, right on the river. Uh, we're going to have a patio. We're going to, you know, as you said, thousands of people, 
yeah. a week potentially are going to be coming there to see shows that maybe they had no idea that Goose Island was there or or no intent to go to have a Goose Island beer, but they're going to walk past it and, and hopefully they're going to beeline yeah. over and have a beer. So it's just the walk-up potential is incredible. And I would say that, you know, Goose Island has done a great job in being a very Chicago thing. I mean, yeah. from the branding to the, using the Chicago flag, now you're at Salt Shed. Yeah. I love the fact that I was in London and I was able to get a, a 312. I mean, talk about having Chicago pride yeah. across the pond, but that's what that's like the beauty of Chicago. That's what, what I feel like that's one of the best things about our city is that we support each other, yeah. like you were talking about here, supporting one another where maybe you don't know how to brew beer, but you know what you want it to taste like. Yeah. Mike got his, uh, his Kolsch, yeah. other people have gotten their things, but that's what Goose Island's all about, continuing to innovate has been around since 88 yeah 88, since 88, 88 yeah. and you a new journey begins in 2024 at salt shed so yeah. any i mean in the meantime though people can come here and hang out at the tap room right? 1800 west fulton that's where we're sitting uh tap room is open wednesday through sunday every week um it's it's a fun place to be it's fun to my, my office is directly upstairs so i can see how much i can hear how much fun people are having yeah. when i'm upstairs and so <laughs> uh it's very convenient to just to pop down and all of a sudden, you're at a bar, basically, um, with familiar faces and um, and people having a beer, passing the chair around. Absolutely, and it is the time of year. So, yeah. Mike, cheers to you. Cheers to you, Tom. I appreciate you. That's mine there. I appreciate you taking time to chat with me. Yeah. And uh, good luck and, and best of best wishes in 2024 at the new spot. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers. All right, that is the latest from Goose Island Tap Room right here on Fulton. Tom Barnes, Chicago at gmail.com. If you have a story from the 78 suggestion, hit me up or go to the website storiesfromthe78.com. Thanks a lot, everybody. Go out and grab a Goose Island Chicago Pride all the way.